The last R is so crucial in the spiritual journey to heaven that every religion on earth has revelations that take care of that moment of reconciliation with nature and our Creator. In Christianity, especially the Catholic version, making a confession of sin and declaring your faith in Trinity is an essential aspect of ending well. In fact, oftentimes a priest offers the dying and anointing of grace and last communion. Perhaps, as a Muslim now, making a last act of faith is not strange to me. The act is so important to me that if he's capable of saving someone who might be on the brink of internal domination. Some people underestimate the power of this last act, but this narration by Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, holds a lot of significance for this topic. In his narration found in Sahih al-Bukhari, book 97, Hadith 16, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah the Exalted say, I am what my servant expect me to be. I am with him when he remembers me. If he remembers me inwardly, I remember him inwardly. And if he remembers me in an assembly, I will remember him in the assembly of angels. In addition to this, there is a story that there was a time the Prophet, peace be upon him, was traveling with his companions when they encountered a man who was um, near death due to illness. The man expressed his desires to embrace Islam. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked him, is there any good deed that you have done for the sake of Allah. The man replied that he couldn't recall any good deeds. However, he had spent his entire life as a highway robber and had harmed people. Despite his past, he expressed remorse and a sincere intention to change. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then asked him, uh, as asked the man's companion, is there any repentance greater than the repentance of this man. He then advised the man to alter the Shahada and the man complied, becoming a Muslim moment before he gave up the ghost. These are apparent examples of people saving themselves before death. The same can be said with, you know, slight modification about this Imam who at the point of meeting his creator decided to do something that is not quite ordinary. Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Open Minded Thinkers Show. This video is proudly sponsored by the like and share buttons. Please like and share to enable us to reach more people. Don't forget to subscribe to enable us to grow. Thank you so much for your support so far. <laughs> In the dimly lit room of the intensive care unit, the atmosphere was heavy with a sense of urgency and vulnerability. The sterile smell of antiseptic filled the air mingled with the soft peeps of the medical equipment that monitored the imam's vital signs. He lay there, his frail body enveloped by the crypt's white hospital sheets, his face bearing the marks of a life lived with peppers and devotion. As the room fell silent, a soothing voice began to resonate, cutting through the tension like a gentle breeze. <laughs> It was the Imam, his voice carrying the weight of wisdom and spirituality. Though weakened by his condition, his recitation of the Quran had an unmistakable beauty and grace. The words flowed effortlessly, each syllable laced with profound meaning and a profound connection to the divine. As a new Muslim, I'm familiar with the surah being recited. I couldn't but, but get mesmerized by the melodic cadence and resonance 
of the Imam's voice, it seems as though the surah he chose was a celestial melody filled with deep emotions that transcended the confines of the hospital room. It was a moment that touched my soul, a rare glimpse into the devotion and serenity that accompanies the preparation to meet one's creator. Beside the hospital bed, a young man, likely the Imam's son, sat with tears streaming down his face. His eyes were fixated on his father, his heart overwhelmed with a profound mix of love, admiration and grief. He listened intently to every word, clinging to each verse as if it were a lifeline. The power of the recitation moved him, deeply reminded him of the immense impact his father had throughout his life. Despite the physical pain and the intrusive medical procedures, the Imam's voice remained unwavering. It was as though the strength of his faith shielded him from the discomfort and uncertainty that plagued his body at that time. As you can hear, his recitation became a beacon of hope, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. In that hospital room, emotions swelled like a tempest. The solemnity of the moment mingled with the unbreakable bond between father and son. It was a bittersweet symphony, a harmonious collision of sadness and gratitude, love and loss. The Imam's voice, both serene and majestic, carried with it the weight of a lifetime worthy of devotion and profound anticipation of a reunion with absolutely the divine. As the least verse echoed throughout the room, a profound stillness stuttered, the silence rocked the air, heavy and unspoken emotions enveloped the sun, overcome by the weight of the movement. He wept uncontrollably, his tears and outpouring of love and grief mingled with gratitude for the privilege of witnessing his father's unwavering faith till the very end. In that sacred space of the intensive care unit, the Imam's recitation had transformed the room into a little paradise, into a sanctuary. It was a testament to the power of faith, reminding those present of the enduring light that shines within the human spirit, even in the face of life's greatest challenges. It was a moment that would forever remain etched in our hearts, a reminder of the beauty that can be found in the most unexpected places like the hospital and the testament to the immeasurable impact a life lived in devotion and service to God can have on others. Ladies and gentlemen, let's leave it right there. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum.